Hello, I am Edward Fulion. Centers for Spiritual Living offers suggested themes and topics for our centers and study groups all over the world. In May, we have been exploring the idea of listening to our hearts. The heart is a symbol of that which is central, vital, the place of love and truth within us. In our Science of Mind teaching, we consider that holy place to be not only at the center of our physical being, but at the center of all that is. In other words, you and I coexist in the center of the divine, in the heart of God, wherever we are and whatever we are doing. Based on this idea, we are inclined to declare, my life is the life of the divine made manifest and spirit works through me in this world. Or we may agree with St. Teresa of Avila when she said, Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. What a brilliant idea it is to think that we are not here accidentally, but here to create, love, serve, express, and live. The team that created this month's theme leaves us with this invitation to action, saying, You must make use of the tools you have been given as a human being starting with a beautiful mind, a mind to contemplate love, to meditate on peace, and to embody the oneness of all, a physical body to experience the world. You have your five senses to see, to hear, to feel, to taste, and to touch. You have a mouth to speak words of love. You have hands to take action and be of service to others. What a beautiful invitation to action. My blessings to you. Hi, everybody. My name is Richard, and I am a member over at the Center of Spiritual Living in Redlands, California. I've been going there for about a year now, and I'm staying. I told Brother Mark the other day that this place feels like home, and I'm not kidding. Uh, whenever I'm there at the facility, and I, everyone there feels like family or friends. Here online, I mean, that still comes through. I'm talking to people who actually care. One reason why I decided to stay is because the truth is they made me feel like there's nothing wrong with me. I was told that I'm perfect just the way I am. And you know what? I believe it. I'm perfect just the way I am. You're perfect just the way you are also. sanctuary now lift your voice and repeat after me we come together we come together we come together in the name of love we come together we come together we come together in the name of love now look at the person next to you I recognize the God in you. 
give you the love in a sanctuary. Now lift your voice and repeat after me. We come together. We come together. We come together. In the name of love, we come together. Yeah, we come together. We come together. Sanctuary. Now lift your voice and repeat after me. We come together. We come together. We come together. In the name of love, we come together. Yeah, we come together. Oh, we come together. Welcome to our Sunday morning service at the Center for Spiritual Living in Redlands, California. We are so excited that you have joined us this morning. My name is Holly Bocanegra, and I am a member of the Board of Trustees. Our theme for the month of May is Listen to Your Heart. Once again, we are very grateful that you have come to join us this morning, and please enjoy the service. There is only love In this moment, in this place I remember who I am Letting fear and worry fall away from me I open my eyes and see there is only love, there is only love, love that heals, love that sets us free. There is seems that I've lost my way when I go inside and quiet my mind I can hear So as we take this breath, we breathe in and knowing in this very moment, God is all that there is. We're knowing that God is joy. God is perfection. God is intelligence. God is love. 
And in this I know that I am one with God because God's Spirit is moving in me, through me, and all around me as I speak. And so as I know this to be the truth for myself, I know this to be the truth for everyone else. That God's Spirit is within them right here, right now. Knowing that God's Spirit is perfection that's moving in them right now. Knowing that perfect wholeness is moving within them right here, right now. Knowing that joy is moving through every heartbeat of our spirit. Knowing that we all are one with that universal presence that's moving in us and through us and all around us today. So today is a day to be grateful. Today is a day to be grateful for this breath that we are taking. We're giving thanks for being fully conscious of who we are. Being grateful for the essence of the Christ consciousness that's within us now. And so in this, we're grateful and knowing the truth that God is at the center of our being, of our core, right here, right now. And as we know in this to be the truth in this very moment, we are giving thanks. Knowing that peace is at hand, peace is within us, and peace is all around us. And in knowing this, we give thanks for this truth. And we just release our words into this universal law. We know that it is perfect. We know that it is complete. We'll say, and so it is. Amen. Gonna feel real good, gonna make a difference, gonna make it right. As I turn up the collar on my win favorite winter coat, this wind is blowing my mind. I see the kids in the street, not enough to eat. Who am I to be blind, pretending not to see their need? A summer's disregard a broken bottle top and a one man soul they follow each other on the wind you know so they got nowhere to go that's why i want you to know i'm starting with the man in the mirror i'm asking him to change his ways no message could if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make that change. Na 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 na. I've been a victim of a selfish kind of love. It's time that I realize there are some with no home, not a nickel to loan. Could it be really me pretending that the Somebody's broken heart and a washed out dream. They follow the pattern of the wind you see. Cause I got no place to be. That's why I'm starting with me. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. No message could. Make the world a better place Take a look at yourself and then make the change You gotta get it right while you got the time You can't turn your back and then close your mind I start with the man in the mirror I'm asking him to change his ways No message could have been any clearer If you wanna make the world a better place Take a look at yourself and then make the change You gotta get it right while you
now you got the time, you can't turn your back and close your mind. That man, that man, that man, that man in the mirror, that man, he better change his ways. No message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make that change. And so good morning, everybody. Welcome to CSL Redlands, our Sunday experience. We're on week five in May of the CSL monthly global theme, Listen to Your Heart. And today's topic is these hands. And when I first read through the material, I thought, well, that's pretty simple, these hands. And then I thought, well, you know, in, as in all of our teaching in the science of mind, it, what appears to be simple can sometimes be complex. And so I'm going to keep today's talk simple and hope that you will at home be inspired to take the ideas deeper, take the ideas and principles and concepts that I speak about today into your private practice, your private spiritual practice at home, so that you can then have a revelation and a demonstration of what's meant for you when we have a weekly topic such as these hands. And in, in many of our centers, you'll hear a phrase, and I hear many ministers now saying this phrase, what's mine to do? And it's kind of a fancy way to say, well, what am I led to do? What is, where does my heart, if I'm going to listen to my heart, then obviously I'm going to choose and select those things in life that are inspiring to me, that I am called to, that I am drawn to. And what I first want to say is that all of us are energy beings. And I think you know that. I think at the core of you, you know that. But if I could not look like this, what I would look like is a ray of sun. What I would look like is the rainbow that many of us saw here in Southern California a couple days ago. And it was, it was lit up. I mean, it was lit up a full arc rainbow. And the, the power of the sun from the inception on one end to the other end was really strong. It was the strongest I had ever seen. And I was able to take a, uh, a short video clip of it. So if anybody wants to see it, let us know how we reach you and we'll send you a little clip, a video clip of that uh, rainbow. We'll post it to our Facebook page. That's what we'll do so that you could go to cslredlands.org on Facebook and find the rainbow because it's what you are. You are one of or more than one of the colors of that rainbow. You are the energetic frequency that lit up that whole thing. I mean, it was remarkable. I was inside the house and saw the bright sun and the rain at the same time and was drawn to go outside to see and sure enough huge energy to create the most beautiful and majestic rainbow you've ever seen arc to arc all the way and actually it was a double or triple through the clouds i saw a double and a triple and you are a single, double, and triple, too, at home. We have that power within us. And most of us are scared of it, right? Most of us would like to close our eyes to it. Most of us would like to close our ears to it. Most of us would like to close our mouth to it and not accept the power that we are. These hands. There's a song by Ricky Byers, Use Me. What shall they do? Command my hands. What shall they do? Command my life. It's here for you. 
Because spirit, the spirit of the living God is already having its way, its full sway in, through, and as you. Yes, I said that. <laughs> I shall repeat that. The spirit of the living God is already having its way. It is already having its full sway in, through, and as you. Uh, you could deny it all you want. And at the same time, you are that. You are the I am that I am. And so there's a, a beautiful quote from uh, St. Ter Teresa of Avila. And it goes a little bit something like this. Christ has no body but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he, she looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which she, he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which she, he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. Yours are his, her body. Christ has no body on earth but yours. And for me, that is the perfect synopsis of this week's theme these hands under the monthly theme listen to your heart what are you called to do how are you called to be of service or maybe you're not there yet and if you're not there yet that is okay because what i will say is this service is not for everybody the first thing in our teaching <laughs> is to turn within, right? To reflect on oneself, to grow oneself. And so what I want to say is, if that's the place that you're at, and what I believe is that God, Spirit, the universal intelligence that created you whole, complete, and perfect, nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing needing, nothing wanting, it knows where you are. You cannot fool it. And so what I'm saying is, let's first do our own work and turn within. Let's first do our own work and do all the unfolding of the layers of the artichoke or the peeling back of the onion. I like the artichoke because some of the ends have little, you know, sticky things that hurt. They go, ah, they could even draw blood. Ow. And that's how the spiritual journey is because you're going to unfold yourself to see at the beautiful at your core, you have this heart, just like in the artichoke. And it's protected by all the layers, right? All Some of the humanness, some of the ugliness, some of the uh, betrayals, some of our hurts, some where people tried to do us harm, right? All that. So we unpeel that in the science of mind in all of our centers. And that is the basis for all of our teaching is to, to self-reflect first, right? To self-heal, to find the places that we have unforgiveness, to allow for greater forgiveness, right? To to allow for all the places that we don't have complete unconditional love for ourselves, to have an opportunity to heal, to be able to accept and embody unconditional love of self. Now, those are just two examples. We have many others. And you'll learn them and you'll take the classes and, and do the work on your own pace and your own path. And it's perfect. It's perfect for you. Without those first two things, which is that self-forgiveness and the unconditional love, I think that we will serve others when we do that work first. And so I'm encouraging you to be of service and also to start service first with oneself. When we're on an airplane, right, and the, um, the cabin crew says what to do in case of an emergency, well, what does it say to do? It says, first put on the mask, you know, oxygen mask for yourself and then help you know, younger children or older people or people who need help. Because many of us don't know that we must put on our own mask first, right? Years ago, I went to a workshop, a weekend workshop that uh, tried to force you to have a epiphany or some grand realization in, you know, 48 or 72 hours. And I fought it the whole time. And there was a lifeboat exercise. And it said, who are the three people you'll put in the lifeboat? I didn't pick me. <laughs> so I got kicked out of that exercise pretty early because I wasn't a survivor in the exercise to be able to be of assistance to somebody else. And so I think you get my message. 
be of service. Find what you're called to. Where is your energy drawn to? What are those things? For some people, it's singing and art and creativity. For some people, it's um, helping homeless. Uh, for some people, it's um, helping youth. For some people, it's uh, speaking in, in ministry or as a practitioner. Uh, for, for some people, it is uh, business and finance. Uh, for some people, it's entre entrepreneurism. Um, for some people, it's poetry. Uh, for some people, it's travel. Uh, what is it for you? Where are these hands? <laughs> At home, you can go lift your hands and go, my hands. Learn to love your hands. Where are they taking you? And it's never too late, no matter how old we are in physical years, to take on something new. A friend of mine, Chaha, who I play tennis with, uh, she has started taking painting up at home, and they're really good. Her images that she shares on Facebook are very, very good. And so how wonderful and what a perfect example of how to use these hands. And so... Uh, let me go to another um, one of the talking points for today's talk. We're not here just to survive. If we properly use our hands and our energy field, right, and we're open to what's for our highest and best good, we will thrive. Just say it with me at home right now. I will thrive. Let's do it again. I will thrive. I will thrive. And to make it even more powerful, let's say together, I am thriving now. I am thriving now. Very good. And so the second idea for today's topic, right? We did the first one, which is we are not here to survive. We are here to thrive. And the second is the bridge from our wisdom heart to our humanness can take us beyond the unknowable and connect us with all things. And so for me, I would like to encourage a typical practice in our Center for Spiritual Living worldwide is meditation. Many of you probably joined us for the meditation that preceded the talk. And thank you for that. And that's part of your spiritual practice that you can continue at home. If you've never done meditation before, try being still for five minutes. As you become more comfortable and still in the stillness, add, go to 10 minutes. And as you become more comfortable and find the methods, the ver there are various methods of meditation, move to 15 minutes. And then as you're more comfortable in the stillness and silence, take yourself to 20 minutes of stillness and silence so we can connect the inner knowing, right, to the humanness. We must use our hands to take out the energy that we're called to do for goodness, for unconditional love, to be a, a, a beneficial presence to the planet. We must bring that to our humanness, right? And there is um, all ministers, uh, especially the old time ministers like our beloved Reverend Irma used to say, we treat and move our feet. And that's very, very important. And then the third uh, main talking point for the weekly theme of these hands is you must make use of the tools that you've been given as a human being and use your beautiful mind. Right? We can we can change the thoughts that go into our mind at any point in time and then change the demonstrations and manifestations and the realizations of our life experience by by reprogramming right what's in our beautiful mind. And if you don't have a beautiful mind or you don't feel you do, I guarantee you, you do. I guarantee you that the deepest essence of all these spiritual truths that every single one I've ever learned, I already knew. And I know that I know that you already know that you know. That's how much I know. So the, these truths, when they're heard, they are simply a reminder, a spiritual adjustment or chiropractic to wake us up to our spiritual magnificence. And that is the truth. And so the way that you can, uh, to, to, uh, fuel your beautiful mind is to use our five senses that we've been given as a human, right? So what are the five senses? To hear, 
to feel, to taste, to see, and to touch. And so we have a mouth, and guess what? Sometimes I use my mouth in advance of a litmus test, which I was just given a couple of days ago by our board member, Holly, who you saw and you met in the welcome part of our service today. Holly had the most beautiful thing that she's been practicing. She said, I asked myself three questions and I hope I got this right. Is it kind? Is it necessary? And is it true? And she, before she replies or speaks back, takes those three thoughts into a litmus test for herself. And I think that's magnificence. It, all, it, it, all, it also shows it's magnificent. And it also shows a great deal of spiritual maturity, right? It's pretty easy if somebody's coming at you verbally for you to just verbally attack right back, right? But guess what? Silence is often an even more powerful response. Silence is often an even more powerful response. And so I pulled a quote on silence from Meister Eckhart, and I would like to share that with you now. Silence is a privileged entry into the realm of God and into eternal life. There is a huge silence inside each of us that beckons us into itself. And the recovery of our own silence can begin to teach us the language of heaven. For silence is a language that is infinitely deeper, more far-reaching, more understanding, more compassionate, and more eternal than any other language. There's nothing in the world that resembles God as much as silence. And so we can use our silence and our stillness, right? To fuel and to guide and to direct, to make our spiritual muscle stronger, bolder, thicker, and wider. It's that place in us that I speak of so often from here that has never been nor could ever be hurt, harmed, or endangered in any way. It's, it's the core of us. It is the I am that I am. And we can participate in fueling it to be able to rely on it. It's how we build faith. I'm inviting you and encouraging you this week to use more stillness and more silence. And there's nothing better than a a pandemic to force us to stillness. And to choose sacred silence within that is still your choice. And so I'm encouraging you and inviting you to become really comfortable with your own company, to be, become really comfortable with your own practices of stillness and sacred silence and meditation. You can set up a beautiful space within your homes for those of us fortunate to have a place to go, to light a candle, to have icons, to have artwork, to have books, to have poetry, to have music, to have incense, to have sage, to have beautiful jewelry or pieces that mean something to you. I brought the bell. Remember the bell? (laughs) I like that. It, It helps me. Just listen. Didn't that feel like forever? And there's an app called Calm that has played uh, commercials with 15 seconds of silence. And you'll see the little counter clock go to 15. And now they're even playing it for 30 seconds. So it's that same idea. They're training people who maybe have never been still for even 15 seconds. What does 15 seconds feel like? And it's it's, it's a good amount of time. What does 30 seconds feel like? Right? Just ask the people who pay for the Super Bowl ads how important it is to be able to get your point across in 15 seconds or 30 seconds. And so there's a a couple of other ideas um, that I wanted to just share with you. And one is an affirmation that I'd like to do now. It's love guides my hands 
in divine right action now. And I'm going to say it and invite you to say it with me at home, okay? Love guides my hands in divine right action now. Let's do that one more time. Love guides my hands in divine right action now. Very good. And I can hear you. And so a closing quote comes from um, an author named Mark Nepo, and the book is called 7,000 Ways to Listen. And it goes like this. Because the mind is a hungry tiger that can never be satisfied, that which is timeless swims in and out of our hands, bringing us forward into places we wouldn't go. So listening to what we're not yet aware of involves silencing the tiger and keeping our hands open so that we can feel when something timeless moves through us. Exactly. 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 Brother Mark, sending you so much love. These hands are reaching out to you to give you a big, huge virtual hug. <laughs> A big, huge pat on the back. Sometimes all we need is a little hug and a little pat on the back. Uh, squeeze yourself now at home. Give yourself a beautiful hug and a beautiful pat on the back and say, you're going to be all right. You are going to be all right. And then say, I am all right. I am thriving now. I am thriving now. I am thriving right here and right now. Listen to the birds. They toil not. Commune with nature. Receive, if you're willing, my unconditional love. And so it is. Blessing to the world. So now uh, I want to transition over to something that's very important. Since we're not able to meet at the facility, we've had to go online for a lot of the things we were accustomed to, Wednesday night services, Sunday night services. Online's even added a happy hour at 5 o'clock every day for, for all of us. So anyway, even though we've moved online, you know, the bills still continue. And they have to be paid. And so... Uh, I'm making a plea to every member out there and every visitor out there that has come and enjoyed it, enjoyed the service, and anybody else who, who feels that this community can, is important and should stay intact. And so I'm asking you guys to pay attention to the links after this video, which will give you instructions on how to donate money. Uh, in the safest way that you feel comfortable in. I mean, a lot. some of it's online and also uh, you can go directly to the facility and drop off a check at a secure mailbox they have there. And uh, a board member will go pick up the checks. And uh, believe me, it's safe. The board members are amazing. They watch every single penny. There is not a penny being wasted. 
It is all for us. And so I'm asking that you do what you can. Don't harm yourself, but do what you can uh, because it is life. And so I'm asking that, uh, that we all stay together and care for one another and care for ourselves and take care. Bye-bye. And so now is our conscious time of giving. So I invite you at home, if you have your tithes and your gifts and your offerings near you, just allow for you to place them on your heart and repeat this offertory blessing with me line by line. I'll give you the line first and then invite you to say it at home. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and my belief. It does great work in the world. And it returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. And yes, I just want to remind you that the portal from which we give through is the same portal. It's the same spiritual muscle from which we receive from. And so if you have any blocks to giving, I invite you to consider that in the silence of your soul. Ask yourself, what is preventing yourself from being a bigger giver? Okay, and if you're watching remotely at home and you found us, send a dollar, send five dollars, send ten dollars, send twenty dollars, send unlimited amount of dollars. We receive it with the same intention from which you give it. And we thank you for being a contributor to the continuation of CSL Redlands as we continue to prosper, thrive, and grow. It is said that Jesus, walking through the multitude, diffused the healing power which touched people into wholeness by its divine presence. His command stilled the wind and the wave. His knowledge of spiritual law fed the thousands. His consciousness of peace calmed the troubled mind. And his love was as a healing balm to the sick. Have you asked yourself, why can't I perform these same miracles? Why can't I live a life of magic? I think you have. I have and I think everyone has. Jesus definitely brought an invisible power of life to bear on his environment. He told his followers that what he was doing, they could do too if they believed they could. He was always talking about the more abundant life, the greater happiness, the deeper peace. He told us that we can rest secure in the love of God, that the power of God is always at our command. He said that God is love, God is truth, God is life, God is power. Not some life, some love, some truth, some power, but all life, all truth, all love, all power. We do not know just how it was that Jesus acquired his terrific faith, but he must have had moments of doubt and misgiving, just as we all do. He must have experienced uncertainty, just as you and I. But unlike most of us, he triumphed. He walked over the waters of doubt, the waves of confusion, and the tempests of fear. And he said, in effect, if you wish to do what I am doing, Follow the few simple truths I have given you. I have told you that the kingdom of God is at hand, but you do not see it because your eyes are so filled with tears that you cannot see. Your ears are so dulled with confusion that you cannot hear. Your minds are so weighed down with doubt that you cannot understand. 
And what was his remedy for all this? Open your spiritual eyes. Listen with the inner ear. Open your mind. And so now it's time for our closing prayer treatment. And I'm going to play the music in the background of Ricky Byers' Use Me. And it's from the album, I Found a Deeper Love. Take a listen. And I'll do the hand movements, inviting you on this week where we spoke about these hands. Show me. All that I must do. I used to think God was the Son. And God is the Son. But God, so much more than the earth or the stars, or all of creation. God is creator, all in all. Needing us to shine its light as me, as you, use me. Here I'll abide as you show me all that I must do. Are you willing to be used by the Spirit of the living God? Command my hands. What must they do? Command my life. God is the love that heals all creation. God is creator, makes all things new. And God needs us to shine its light as me. As you sing it at home with me, use me, oh God, I stand for you, here I'll abide, as you show me all that I us to shine its light. God needs us to shine its light. God needs us to shine its light as me, as you use me. Oh, God, I stand for you. Here I'll abide as you show me all that I must do. Show me all that I must do. Show me all that I must do. And inviting you to turn within with me now. Simply exhaling out anything and everything that has preceded this moment in time, just letting it all go with our breathing. And as we inhale in, we inhale the divine, we inhale the breath of God.
And as we exhale out, we release and surrender anything that does not match that divine breath of God. Just let it go. And as we allow for our outer eyes to close, inviting you now to allow for your inner eyes to open. And with the inner eyes open, we see rightly, we see divinely, we see as God sees, we see that there is one power, one presence, one life, the omnipresence of God, of pure spirit, of universal intelligence, of the mother, of the father. This infinite wisdom always awaiting to have a bigger impress upon me and upon you. It is the life that I live, it is the life that you live. It is right where I am, it is right where you are. And it is from this place of unity and oneness that I speak a word of blessing. I speak a word of blessing this day for all of your needs to be met on time, every time. And if you wish to participate in allowing this, just say yes at home. Just say yes, 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 yes. And so you remove any obstacles, allow with something as simple as your breathing from anything that's in the conscious, unconscious, or subconscious mind, any tapes that replay that have an effect that is not to your highest and best good, just let those things have no meaning anymore in your life. Let them slip away and be replaced with the truth that God is at hand, that life is at hand, that love is at hand, that this intelligence is wisdom is at hand to use me, to use you in a bigger, bolder, brighter and way. And if it's for your highest and best good, I declare it, I affirm it. And I know that it's happening right here and right now. And that your good is here and right now too. So I call forth miracles to look ordinary in your life. I speak a word of blessing for uh, my family, for my nephew, Alec, as he had shoulder, shoulder surgery. And he, we, I, I ask that you see him with me for a perfect recovery. He's a young man with a baseball scholarship and just, we're so proud of him. He's going to SDSU. So see his recovery as whole, complete, and perfect. See your recovery at home as whole, complete, and perfect. Right here and right now from anything that you are moving your way through. And so I call forth Christy in my mind's eye now and see that she moves as God moves, that every organ action function, cell and fiber of her being, of Alex being, radiates, glistens and glows with the light and love intelligence of pure spirit, of pure God, of the pure grace of God. And I call forth any crooked pathways in your life to be made straight and narrow, easy with grace and with joy and with humility and with patience and tolerance. I call forth all these attributes of God right here and right now to be active in my life and to be active in your life right here and right now. And we speak a special word of condolence and blessings to the family of Robbie Wilson, to his mom, Debbie, and to his grandmother, Carolyn, and grandfather, and to his sister, Amber, and to all the Corbinos. Our heart is broken with the passing of Robbie at only 29 years old. And he used to sit in the front row of our center with his six-year-old daughter, Peyton. And so we send her a lifetime of blessings as well. For he has moved to the other side of the veil. And so we ask that this family receives blessings, the peace that passes human understanding. And we call forth blessings for the continued recovery of Jody, who is one of our teachers in, in, in meditation workshop at our center. She just came out of ICU and is recovering at home with her daughter, Nikki. So I know that right where they are, God is. I know that right where you are, God is. And so I'm just so grateful to speak this word. I'm grateful to speak my word to the law of life, knowing that it's true, knowing that it's done, knowing that it's so. And with a heart filled with gratitude and praise, I simply release my word to the law of life, which only knows to say yes. And so if you're willing to say yes with me at home together, just say yes, yes, yes. And we let it be so, and I let it be so. 
and invite you to say with me together, and so it is. And so it is. And so it is. Ashe. Holy, holy way. Sir.